Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Meet the Judges event. Just going to give us a couple more seconds here to make sure that everyone who's participating tonight is able to sign on to the call, and then we will get started with all of our fantastic content for you all this evening. Okay, so just a couple of minutes uh, to wait and make sure everybody is able to sign on to the call. Okay, perfect. Um, and in the meantime, while we wait for a couple more people to connect, I just wanted to go over uh, some, some basic information with you about our competition. First of all, welcome to the Tiger Global Case Competition, TGCC 2021, this year with the title, The Future of Mobility. Super exciting. Um, my name is Lila Parada Warby. I'm the country manager for the Brazil Office of Crimson Education, and I will be your host for this evening. Super excited. So as I said, before we get started with our event, before we meet our judges, um, I wanted to align a couple of pieces inf of information with you all about our event. So first of all, TGCC is the largest global virtual case competition for high school students in the world. This year's edition is brought to you once again by our principal partner, that's Tiger Global Management, our official sponsor, PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, our global partner, M&G Investments, and of course, powered by Crimson Education once again. So this competition is an incredible opportunity for high school students ages 13 to 18, for all of you guys to step into the shoes of consultants and to solve a challenge for a real business. So this is a super unique and exciting opportunity for those of you who are interested in the business world. Um, and for the second year in a row, TGCC is 100% virtual. So students can compete from anywhere in the world and take advantage of this amazing opportunity. And it's, you don't have to have any prior experience to be able to engage and participate in this competition, okay? Throughout the competition, you guys are going to be able to attend different workshops, build your skills, then you'll get the business case, analyze it, develop your solutions, and our finalists are going to have the opportunity to present their case solutions to a live panel of judges, those fantastic individuals that you all are going to meet today. Okay, and you won't be alone in this journey. It's a really exciting opportunity to build your leadership, teamwork skills, as you work with two to four other students in your teams to crack the case and to present your solutions. Okay, and so once again, for our second virtual edition, we have currently 2,355 registrations that are coming from 58 countries all over the world, which uh, accounts for 769 teams in total. So super competitive, but also very exciting, great opportunity for you guys to connect with international peers as well. But if you, if anybody listening to us tonight is actually not currently among those registrants, don't worry, you guys still have an opportunity to register. Registrations will be open um, until August 3rd, Tuesday, August 3rd, 2359 p.m. New York City time. So that's an hour earlier Mexico City time for those of you in that time zone and midnight and 59 minutes Sao Paulo time one hour later. OK, all of that information is on the website. You guys will get emails about that as well. But there's still plenty of time for you guys to register. So anybody who is, hasn't registered yet, make sure you do so. OK, wonderful. So let's get to our content for this evening. Once again, if anybody just joined us and you didn't hear, uh, my name is Lila Prada Warby. I'm country manager for the Brazil Office of Crimson Education, one of the organizations that's putting on this fantastic event this year. And I will be your host for this evening for our Meet the Judges session. So the, the objective of our session is for all TG, TGCC 2021 competitors and those of you who are still thinking about registering, I'm sure you will after this event is over, um, to get to know the judges that are going to be evaluating the top case solutions that progress on to the regional round for our region. Our region is Central and South America, okay? So you guys get to hear a little bit, a, a little bit about them, their career trajectories, what sort of things they're gonna be looking out for in the competition, okay? Before we get started, before we meet our judges, a couple of notes for you all. So first of all, this session is going to last about 30 minutes. Um, we want you all to engage throughout. We will be using the Q&A box for any engagement, okay? So if you guys look on down on the bottom of your little Zoom screen, you'll see that there's a button that says Q&A. Please place all of your questions in that box 
please refrain from using the chat to ask any questions. That'll just help us to keep things more organized, okay? So we want you all to be asking questions about TGCC. When's the deadline? What's the case? What, what, what upcoming workshop should I participate in? We have two team members from TGCC who are on the line. They're ready to respond to all of the questions that you guys might have. So please, once again, put those into the Q&A box. We have a couple of prepared questions that we're going to ask our judges, but for the last 10 minutes of the event, we're going to invite you all to ask your questions um, in our live Q&A. And so we also want you guys to include your questions for the judges in the Q&A box throughout the presentation. So, you know, somebody describes something about their career, a piece of advice, a question pops up for you, put that into the Q&A box. And then we want everyone to engage and upvote so you can like the questions that you most want to hear our judges answering in the live session. If you have a question for specific judge, please address that judge by name, or if it's just a general question, no need to do so. All right, so we definitely want to see tons of questions coming through, tons of engagement from you all this evening, okay? While I introduce our panel, we're going to launch a couple of audience polls just so that we can get to know um, a little bit better those of you who are joining us today. Please answer those. We want to hear, we want to learn more about you, okay? So we're going to be launching those polls now, all right? But without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm gonna ask our judges to turn on their camera so that I can introduce the incredible judges from the Central and South America region that will be engaging with you all in our uh, regional round of the competition. Okay, wonderful. So first let's start with Ana Beatriz Garcia. So Ana is based in Sao Paulo, but she's joining us from New York tonight. Um, she graduated from the University of Virginia. She did summer coursework at Harvard College as well. And as a college student, she was one of the co founders of Braza, the Brazilian Students Association, which has since then become the largest student association of Brazilians overseas with over 8,000 members, and it's currently present at over 100 universities worldwide. Ana started her career in the cooperative market, and two years ago, she was the first employee to be hired as COO, Chief of Operations for Inteli, which is the Institute of Technology and Leadership, a nonprofit philanthropic organization focused on developing future tech leaders to drive transformation in Brazil. Wow. Welcome, Ana. So excited to have you. Thank you so much, guys. I'm really excited to be here. Wonderful. Okay. So next, it's my pleasure to introduce Juan Pablo Perez Calva. Welcome, Juan Pablo, who's joining us from Mexico City. So after Juan Pablo graduated from the Red McComb School of Business at the University of Texas at Austin, he worked in the banking and private equity industry for several years before he moved into the fintech space. Okay. During his years in banking and private equity, he led various multi-million dollar projects, including a $400 million securitization program in the Mexican public market. More recently, he's moved into the fintech environment to lead the development of an automated microloan service for transfer users through their app. And nowadays, he's the founder and CEO of Chape, a, fin a fintech company which is starting operations in Mexico. Welcome, Juan Pablo. Hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure being here. Okay, and last but certainly not least, our third incredible judge who I have the pleasure of introducing today, Kim Farrell. So Kim also based in Sao Paulo, but she's tuning in today from Massachusetts, a graduate of Harvard College. Kim currently heads up the marketing team for Latin America at TikTok. I'm sure all of you are familiar with that organization, leading the overall marketing strategy for a hyper growth region and working to bring the TikTok brand to life. Prior to joining TikTok, Kim spent eight years at Google in both brand and product marketing from Brazil, and she also spent some time at Booking.com, leading integrated marketing for the U.S. and Latin America. Kim is also passionate about diversity and inclusion and women's empowerment. She founded um, at girlgang.br, check it out, a positive community for women's empowerment based in Brazil, and she also works as an international speaker and social media influencer on at Kim Soeo on all things women empowerment, marketing, career, and being a hashtag girl boss of course so welcome kim we're so excited to have you that's thank a bio you. of a marketer right guys thank you okay. Fantastic. So as you all can see, we have an incredible panel of judges. They're all coming from super diverse backgrounds. They're going to be bringing different perspectives to their evaluations of your case solutions, which is what we're really excited about. And our idea now with this next segment is we just want to hear some insight from them about their careers to really inspire those of you who are at this sort of pivotal moment in, in your high school, thinking about college, thinking about participating in, in these competitions. So please don't forget to ask your questions about TGCC and to pop your questions for our expert judges 
judges into the Q&A box, okay? Once again, if you have a specific question for a judge, refer to them by name, okay? And we will have time to get to some of those questions during our live Q&A and upvote those questions that you most want to hear answered. Okay, let's kick it off. We have a question. Oh, wait, I'm seeing here just right, right before we start our questions. I just got some poll results showing us that 100% of the people who voted in an attendance have registered already for the Tiger Global Case Competition. Make sure you tell your friends, make sure that they register as well. Um, okay, perfect. So let's get started with a question for our entire panel. Um, and we will start with Ana Beatriz. So Ana, what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone who is just starting out in their career now? Oh, so, um, you know, I think when we are young, especially in the end of high school, um, that I think are mostly, you know, the, the students here, um, there are two things that I noticed, especially looking back in my, my personal experience. One is that we are highly influenced by our families and the high schools that we go to. And with what they say that what seems to be, you know, the best careers. So, for example, when I was in high school, they talked about a lot about, you know, medicine or engineering or becoming a lawyer, because those were careers that seemed to have more stability, you know, both financially and both in the in the job market, which is great. And it's probably true, uh, but that doesn't give a lot of space, you know, for for my creativity or and and for, you know, for my passions. So, you know, I think that it's really important to find what you're passionate about because that's what's going to make a big difference, you know, in your career, you know, that's what's going to make the, the actual difference, you know, to be successful. So I think that you have, my advice is that you have to bring this new element in your career choices and those career choices to start, you know, right now, you know, since you're choosing to be part of the, the TGCC or, you know, the college you, you, you choose to, to apply to, or even the major you're going to choose, you know, um, sooner, very soon, probably when you attend to college. And it's, it's funny, though, that, you know, many people also think that, okay, but how, how do I know what I'm passionate about? You know, that's not obvious to everyone, you know? So I think uh, my main advice is that go look for practical things you can do, you know? So experimenting things in the field um, that you might like. And, and you know, no one tells you uh, how much doing things is much funnier than like studying them at least for me, that's the case. Um, so I think that it's not, it's not as hard as it looks, you know? So if you want to be an investor, um, start investing, you know? If you want to be an entrepreneur, um, start doing your own little thing and you're probably gonna fail. And if that happens, you know, that's okay because at least you, you might have enjoyed it and then you're gonna find out that you really like that and then you're gonna do it again. And, that, and then, you know, sometimes you're, you're going to end up being successful. So my advice is to um, go after something um, practical and, and practical experiences in order to find your passions. That's awesome advice and very relevant because TGCC is literally an opportunity for you to, you know, dive into what it means in practice to be a business consultant. And there are other awesome competitions like this too that students can go after. So that's super helpful advice. Okay, next over to Juan Pablo. So what, again, is a piece of advice that you would give someone who's just starting out in their career? So uh, complimenting Sana answer, I would advise these people starting out their career uh, to always have a goal or an end game in mind for the professional life, but to always uh, walk step by step. You know, I think we always, whenever we're young and starting high school, we always think like, oh, I'm gonna go into finance, I'm gonna go into engineering and thinking that we're gonna end up at that exact job that, that we thought we would, but most likely we won't. So just try to learn on every step, you know, college, on the first job, then on, the, on, on a new venture, on, on anything that you're starting, just try to learn and try to see where your skills fit the most, right? Do not marry the idea of a position or an industry. Always try to be flexible and find the best for, the best fit for your skills and to get the most out of that, you know? Um, and as, as Anna mentioned, uh, overall, just follow your passion, not, again, an industry or a career or a position. It's mostly a, about what you, what you like or, what you like doing, right? While, while, while working. So uh, it's pretty much just go step by step, learn on every step. And at the end, just try to find that place that 
you feel comfortable in that your skills match the most. That'll be That's my awesome. Advice. That's great advice. Yeah. And I think it's great to see too, you know, all three of you are very young. We've just gone over your bios and you guys have already kind of had so many different experiences that it's really obvious in your different career tra trajectories that, you know, it isn't fixed. It isn't stable. You're not kind of committing to something forever. You can always experiment and do new things. Okay. Over to you, Kim, with this same question. Once again, what is a piece of advice that you would give to someone who's just starting out in their career? Well, I agree so much with what's already been said. I think I'll just add um, two two things that I think are are practical uh, advice that that I received. So one was um, that uh, m my dad told me to have five things that I really cared about, five things that to me were non-negotiables. It can be where you want to live. It can be how much money you want to make. It can be the title you want to have. It can be the type of day to day you want to have. It can be the work-life balance you want to have. It can be um, how much you interact with people or whatever it is that, you know, think of five things that are really important to you. And if you find a job that gives you three of them, it's pretty good. Four, take it right away. And you will probably not find one with all five. And so that will really help you to figure out, uh, you know, what makes sense for you. And I've really applied this in every career decision I've made. I've kind of reflected and said, okay, what are the five things that are really important to me right now? You know, is it where I want to be living? Is it what I want to be doing? Is it the type of job or the exposure or the networking or the day-to-day -day activity or whatever? And when I find the job that, you know, has four, that's when I make those career changes or I make, you know, I go after those positions. So I think that's just a practical exercise that it's really simple. It's five things. If it hits three, it's good. If it hits four, go for it, you know, uh, and just know that you'll be giving up on, on that fifth. Um, and then I think, you know, a little bit of, of what Juan Pablo was saying about having a goal. I think um, I think it's really important that you find a unique goal for yourself uh, and you do that reflection and you are vocal about it. Um, people will not build your career for you. Uh, and But there's a lot of people that are willing to help. And I think one of the things that I did really early on that I didn't even realize I was doing uh, was I was being very vocal about certain goals that I had. Lila, I think you'll remember when we studied together, I said, I want to live in Brazil and work on the Olympics. That was my five-year plan. And I did not stop talking about it um, until I was able to kind of make that happen. And it was because people then thought of me as the girl that never stopped, stopped talking about that. And so when an opportunity came up that that could, could, could work for, you know, I was top of mind. So I would just say, you know, don't be shy about it. Find ways to, to, to let people know. Uh, what you want to do and people will help you in, in general. What's awesome about Kim's example too is just that it's it was a super ambitious goal, right? But that didn't scare her off. That didn't, you know, prevent her from looking for those opportunities in those networks. So you guys can have passions that seem, you know, scary um, or seem very distant and, and know that it's still possible for those things to, to occur. Kim, we're going to follow up with you with one more question. So, um, you know, getting into a little bit more about what, what, how you all operate as individuals, how you kind of see the world and how you see your profession. So what values would you say that you're committed to? kind of, you know, and that can be both in your professional and personal life. And how do those really guide your decision making in your career? Awesome. Um, I think I'm, I'm very committed uh, in everything that I do to, I think, diversity and inclusion. I know that those are buzzwords of the moment, but I truly believe that and put that into practice, um, not only in the marketing campaigns that you will see, but the way that they come to be. So all of the agencies or suppliers that, that, that we hire uh, on my team our diverse teams, uh, the the production companies we work with, or the any, you name it, um, we really bring that 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 layer to it because I believe that one of the biggest opportunities, you know, I think talking with people that work at startups or or um, you know entrepreneurs or or all of that, I've chosen to work at large companies, and my biggest thing is how can I use uh, large companies' budgets to invest in what I believe in, and so. That's investing in you know, diverse practices, inclusive practices. So I think that that's one. I think the second connected to that is empowerment. Um, and I think that that is around uh, empowering people uh, to feel like they have ownership of what they do. Um, uh, and so that's not only for women, but for anyone you know, who's on, on my team or that I work with, um, making sure that you know, no one feels like they're working for someone, but that they're working for something that they, that they believe in and that they're empowered to kind of make those decisions. I think that that's really important. And then I think the last one um, is, is authenticity. Uh, I believe in bringing my whole self to work every day. So I, I will give an example, had a really important meeting on Tuesday. 
presenting my H2 strategy the second half of the year to all of the marketing leaders for TikTok. And I decided to open my presentation with a TikTok that I recorded. It was fun. I wrapped the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air uh, soundtrack, you know, and, and it, that's my way. That's who I am. And, and so I think, you know, I think really embracing who you are as a person and, and being real and being accessible and being authentic means that your team will feel that they can be that way. The people that work with you will treat you that way. Uh, and that really builds the relationships so that then, you know, people want to work with you, want to help you going back to kind of the previous thing. So those would be, I think, three that, that, that I believe in. That's super valuable. That's super valuable. And I think that's really good advice for, you know, young people who may think that, listen, the transition to a professional world means changing who you are, not being who you are. Um, and, you know, I think more and more that's not true, but it's also a personal decision that we have to make to be authentic, you know, in our careers. Wonderful. Okay, let's go back over to Juan Pablo for another question. So um, going along this kind of same trajectory of, of talking about you all like, as individuals and you all personally, tell us a little bit about how you chose the career path that you're on now and why, kind of what inspired you in, in, in those fields in your transition into FinTech and to entrepreneurship as well. I'm curious to hear about that. Okay, so uh, I have been in love with finance since I can really remember. I started trading stocks and reading books about invest, investing as strategies during middle school, and I could not stop. See, Anna was right. About... You can start early. <laughs> you can start being practical. Early. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really weird because I would just go to Warren Buffett's books and you know start learn. Uh, I mean, reading them. I don't know if I if um, that helped. I mean, that probably helped a lot, but you know, it was at some point that I didn't really know much about finance, so it's just start somewhere, right? Uh, that that's that's some something key actually just start doesn't matter where just just begin doing it so uh mostly that and then fr from there i knew finance would be my career path um for sure however even after i knew i wanted to work in finance i wandered through different jobs ranging from investment banking private equity to, to fintech and this was not fulfilling my expectations uh, i've always been driven driven by innovation and that's what, what was missing for me and these big companies, big corporations, as what it was just mentioned. Uh, I mean, it, it has a big sense of importance and, you know, big businesses, but that's not what I was looking for. And uh, so I started talking to some people, some mentors, and that's when I decided to become an entrepreneur. Uh, just as a side note, uh, I've always had an entrepreneur mindset since I was really young. And so that's why I made that leap from being um, for just working at a company to actually trying to innovate and do something, uh, everything differently. So um, I decided to become an entrepreneur within the fintech scene uh, where I can work in finance through innovation. So uh, in summary, uh, experimenting through different industries, learning, uh, I mean, wanting to learn and trying to find innovation, that's how it just my current career, career path. That's awesome. That's great to see, you know, taking a risk as well. Um, it's very exciting. Okay. And then we'll go back to Kim for one more question and then we'll bring you back on. I promise. Um, okay. So Kim, what do you wish you had known before you took on your first management role? That managing people is hard. <laughs> I think that there's a lot of desire to have the title of manager uh, and not as much true desire to really manage people. And I think um, it's been, it, it's a wonderful experience. It's my favorite part of my job. Um, but I think that um, uh, when you are an individual contributor and you are responsible for, for, for everything, for the results, it gives you a lot of control and you really only have to really think about you and what's going on in your life, your emotions, your family, your, you know, your situation. And when you transition to a manager, it becomes a lot of putting you aside and, and really, really making sure that your team is in the right environment, that they feel protected and empowered to do the work because then they're the ones that actually make it happen. Um, and so I think that, that that work is very different and it requires a really different skill set than than the execution uh, side of things. So I think if someone had told me, uh, if I if I had known that before, I think it I would have prepared myself uh, differently. But um, yeah, you you learn learn by doing as well as as Anna was saying. You know, you just have to start doing things. Um, but I would say that that was the biggest for me. 
Wonderful. Yeah. And you're, you may not get it right the first time, but you got to keep trying and, and building up those skills. All right. Anna, as promised, we have two in a row for you. So um, it's, uh, we were talking about career, we we're talking about hiring, we we're talking about people management, you know, and you're in this operations role, you guys are growing a company. So when, when you're thinking about building out a team, what are some of the main qualities that you are looking for when hiring? And how do you think mm -hmm. that students can already start to get a jump start, develop some of those, um, those core qualities and competencies, you know, in high school, through extracurriculars and college, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Great. So I think the first thing is um, cultural fit, right? And it's funny because we hear a lot about this. I think, you know, every company says they're looking for someone with cultural fit and every company has a different culture. Um, and, you know, for those who will be hired, sometimes it's confusing. I mean, especially if you're in the beginning of your, of your career to, to say like, but what's cultural fit and how do I know if I have that, you know? Um, so it's hard to explain. And I think with college is exactly the same thing. You know, you, you need to, to feel like you fit in that, in that place and with that, that community and with that culture and everything. Um, so I think it's, 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 it's a more something that you feel, um, and not, you know, just something, you know, not just bullet points that you, that you check, you know, so it's just like having, uh, imagine you just meet someone and go for coffee and then you're having this great conversation and you just connect and you feel this alignment with, you know, the way you see the world now and, you know, about the, the vision, you know, of the person and everything. And you just have this really good feeling that everything the other person is saying makes sense. Um, so I think that's a, a way to explain what, you know, cultural fit feels like. Um, so that's one thing we look when, when hiring and that's really important. The other thing is, you know, collaboration. I think, you know, it's really, really important to know how to work in teams and, you know, to be productive and, and excellent as in your individual work, but also to be really um, collaborative, you know, as a team and, and, you know, to really connect to people and being empathetic to people um, and understand your needs and, knowing how to like maximize you know each other's potential um so i think collaboration is really really important um another thing i think is transparency that's really important for me like to be able to say um how you feel and you know to be able to say that you don't like this or that you don't agree with this i i that's really important for me in my in my job and and you know i think I think we should stimulate and encourage people to do, to do that more, you know. So for you who are students now, practice doing that at your schools, you know. Be transparent, like have the hard conversations, maybe with your teachers or with your counselors, because you probably have to do that, you know, at work one day. Because otherwise you're just going to say yes and say that everything is fine and that you agree with everything. And then sometimes, sometimes you're just going to explode and you're just going to be like, that's not OK. Like I'm doing things I don't want to. So I think transparency for me is really important. Um, share the vision of the company. And, you know, probably it relates to back to passion, what we talked about, you know, at the end game, you know, has to be, you know, somewhere you connect because you're not going to love your job every day, right? I'm pretty sure nobody here loves his job every day. Even Kim, who works in the coolest place ever, probably she doesn't love her job every day. You know, there are things you don't like. But at the end, what keeps you there is probably the passion and, you know, the end game, that the, this big alignment. And I think the last one is to have the same level of commitment, you know, so you have to be aligned that the person you're bringing to the team, you know, has the same level of commitment that you need, you know. So sometimes it's, you know, six hours a day, sometimes it's eight hours a day, and there are people who don't want to work any minute past that. And that's okay because they have other priorities, but maybe... You know, maybe sometimes you're going to have to work 10 hours or 12 hours and, you know, we're going to have to put, you know, other things aside and, you know, um, kind of focus on work and, you know, that that might be OK and maybe not for, you know, the person you're bringing in. So make sure that you're all aligned with the, the level of commitment. Yeah, I think. And last one, obviously, is smart people, right? Fast thinkers, people with critical vision, you know, that can, you know, um, look for problems creatively and 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 you know bring you know have different approaches to solve complex pro, uh, problems and things like that so definitely um, critical vision is really important as well 
So on a, along those lines are uh, an, another question for you um, is in terms of the actual skills. So you've mentioned a couple of these skills too in, in your previous response, but you know, the skills that students need to kind of to transition into college to get into the job market. Um, what are some of those key skills, maybe like more hard skills potentially? And then how do you think that TGCC can help them to develop those skills? I think critical thinking is one that you just said, you know, which is super relevant, for example. Yeah, I think the main one is creative problem solving, you know, because that's something you're going to use anywhere. And probably Keen uses this all every day, Juan Pablo, a lot, probably, especially when starting a startup. Um, so I think creative problem solving or just, you know, solving complex problems. Because um, I think like in the past, I'm talking about like, I don't know, 10, 15 years from now, um, many of the problems, um, they've already been solved through technology, you know, so things that were big issues back then that you need, you know, people to solve like more technical things. Um, today, most of them are already solved by technology. And, you know, what's really important is this human element um, to solve problems. And that's why it's important to have creative problem solving, you know. Um, so, and, and, and it's not just about being creative. It's like this whole set. And this, this method, you know, this, this method just to approach problems and to solve problems. And that starts with, you know, doing research and understanding who is your client, what is his pain, you know, what, and then like, what, what does your business need to, to solve, to address? And it's really funny because and you're starting to think about the solutions. You want a solution that solves like a hundred problems, you know, it wants to solve everything um, for the customer. And then you realize that's not feasible. You know, you, you can't solve everything. So you need to choose like the main pains, the main points of the problem that you want to solve. Um, and then, you know, when you, you come up with like a hypothesis, um, you have to bring all the team together. And then there's a lot of collaboration, you know, and, and trying to find everyone um, um, strengths, you know, to, to, and to, 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 to be part of the team and, and try to address it. There is, you know, data analysis that is also really important. You know, we have a lot of data and that, you know, with all the research we're doing, and you really have to understand like how to use data to, to, um, to do the, to take the strategic, the most strategic, you know, solutions. And yeah, and then in the end, you have to come up with something practical and something, you know, feasible, and hopefully something simple, right? Because we have so many things uh, that it's really easy to come up with, you know, something huge and really complex, but we want to find like the simple solutions that can solve the complex problems. And, you know, to do all that, I think it's really important to have creating problem solving. And basically that's mostly what you're doing here at DGCC, right? Uh, you know, smaller scale, but I think that you will have the chance to go through all this, this process, you know, of analyzing, trying to see the customer, the problem, uh, drawing in hypotheses, and, you know, maybe testing, and then coming up with a solution, seeing if it's, uh, seeing if it's feasible. Um, yeah, and hopefully, you know, the, the best solution will, will win, and we'll be here to, to help you um, decide that. But yeah, I think definitely focusing on creative problem solving. So in addition to being obviously wonderful advice for, for you know, everyone's life and career, Anna gave a lot of really good tips for you guys for the case competition. And I think, you know, based on the experience that we saw last year, being simple, you know, in your solutions, not trying to address everything. I think those are like really good concrete advice for you guys going into this competition. So don't forget about that. Um, before we do our last question, prepared question for Juan Pablo, make sure everybody that you guys continue to ask your questions in the Q&A. We're going to take a few of you, your questions. I see people are upvoting. So continue Continue to upvote those questions and put your questions in there so that we can choose a few of your questions to ask our judges. All right, Juan Pablo, continuing on along this advice for TGCC, what do you consider to be the most, the most important skill or lesson that you hope that students are going to learn by participating in TGCC this year? Okay, so um, even if, if uh, TGCC is, uh, this year is going to be remote, I believe uh, a big lesson that students should learn, it's, it's about networking. Right, uh, talking to people, meeting people, um, helping people even, you know, uh, during these, these case competitions or different events, that's what's gonna advance you professionally and personally at many stages in, in, in life, you know. Um, 
one of those points about networking and that would help students a lot that would have helped me a lot way before right now is to find a mentor you know um a mentor would help you and help you excel at, at what you're most skilled you know as kim mentioned no one is going to build your career for you but there are some few people that are willing to give you a push by teaching you how to run a business how to connect with people how to advance in your career on anything they're willing to, to help you so it's better to just learn from someone who have already walked the walk than starting out from zero um, you will find this through networking if you're a businessman you know you, you will find someone to make to make a business with your entrepreneur you might find someone your next co-founder you never know who you'll meet so always try to use networking as a professional personal tool uh, as an advantage you know e even as your advantage or helping others that'll lead you to having a, a better connection to others and will always push you forward that's great advice. That's great advice. And, you know, again, based on the students that we engaged with last year, you guys are going to be competing alongside some very, very impressive students, of course, in addition to the judges and all of the experts that are going to be providing workshops for you guys. So it really is going to be a fantastic opportunity to network at all levels. Okay, you guys, let's move on to, I think we're going to have time for one question for each judge from the audience. Um, we're going to start out with a question for, for Kim, a very sweet question here from Catherine. Um, so she says, Kim, you are such an inspirational woman. What were some difficult that you faced as a woman um, in, you know, building your career in business? And, you know, maybe what's some advice that you have for, for other young women that are wanting to go into business and maybe feel like it could be a challenging environment? I love this question. And thank you, Catherine, for the kind words. Um, I think uh, the first thing that I think every woman deals with in their career are the microaggressions that are kind of built into the way that our society uh, was made. Um, and so it's it's little things that kind of happen in the day to day that, that you don't realize are, are maybe just tearing you down a little bit. And so I think the first is just being aware that those exist um, and, and, and knowing how to recognize them. It's you know when, when you might be a little bit upset at work and someone asks you if you're PMSing and maybe you're actually just upset about work and you're allowed to have that emotion. Uh, it can be something around, you know, saying that you should take the notes of the meeting because, you know, you have the best handwriting and, you know, because women have better handwriting and that takes you out of the conversation of that meeting, you know, and so because you're focused on, on you know, taking notes or, or anything, you know, I've, I've had friends who have been, you know, you should go present in front of the client because you're, you're you know, you're the pretty one, uh, you know, and they've given me those examples. So I think just knowing that that's something that happens in the day to day and just being able to recognize it and, and, and not let it kind of affect you. Um, I think the second is, a, is connected to that, which there just is some extra effort sometimes that is needed in the day to day. And I think a perfect example I gave of that was when I was at, when I was, when I was at booking.com, uh, I traveled a lot to Amsterdam from New York with, with my boss and we would take the same flight and he was like, well, let's just go straight to the office. And I said, I need to shower and put myself together. Um, he said, well, you know, there's, there's showers in the you know bottom floor of the office. And I said, you know, that's actually not like, <laughs> I need a bit more structure than that to feel ready for a work day after an overnight flight and jet lag. And, you know, that's, that's the type of woman that I am. Not all women uh, are that way. And I don't want to generalize, but I think, you know, just it's an, it's an extra effort sometimes for a woman to feel comfortable going to a networking event. It takes a little bit more preparation for her to feel, you know, ready for the day or whatever it might be, um, you know, that seems, these might seem like small little things, but they add up a lot. And so I think just knowing that there's a lot more pressure on women on what's the color of our nails, is our makeup done? Are we wearing the right clothes for that speech that we're giving or just little things like that, that, that mentally can be, can be a bit exhausting in the day to day. So I think that's something that you learn to deal with, I think over time and you create your own, your own comfort zones for that. And the last thing is imposter syndrome. So I think uh, I face that every day in, in my job and I, I speak about that. So I'm, I'm not shy about it. I don't understand a lot of times why I'm getting recognized for something or how I got to the place that I am or that someone's going to find out that I'm not supposed to be, you know, in, in the job that I am. And, you know, they're asking me to judge this competition. They're going to, you know, decide that they're going to find out in the middle that they should have never invited me or whatever it might be. Um, imposter syndrome sneaks in you know, constantly. Uh, and, and so I think, you know, preparing yourself for that, being able to recognize your accomplishments and remind yourself of those in a consistent way so that you can overcome when it, when it hits you, uh, I think is, is another thing that, um, that, that I've, I've learned kind of, you know, to deal with over time. So I don't know if that was too long, Lila, sorry, but 
Those are that was three. fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable. I think that's super inspiring, you know, to hear that from was somebody. Great. I love to hear that. Thank you. That's awesome. Anna, so you have your mic on. I have a question for you. I'm curious to hear your response. Um, so what if a student, you know, has found their passion, but that passion is not well paid? What kind of advice would you give to that student, you know, thinking about diving into that area? Well, the thing is, how do you get to the conclusion that it's not well paid? You know, because the thing is, if you do it really well, like really well, you know, if you want to be the top, 10 in it you know in the country or something um you're probably going to be well paid you know it's it's just it's probably not you know among the the you know highest paying jobs maybe but i just doubt that if you become you know really good at it um it's just going to be not well paid um so i think that tends to be something we like to generalize you know oh this is not well paid and this is not well paid um yeah, because maybe, you know, in average that that doesn't have a really good, you know, outcome. But if you're really good at it, um, I, I think that, you know, I think you're going to be well paid. And that's what, what that's what we see, like, in actuality with, you know, this big artist, you know, things that really people that really stand out. Um, and I think that what that's what if, if that's really your passion, then you should strive to be the best at it, you know. And then, you know, I think you're going to be rewarded um, accordingly. So yeah, I think we should really be careful with this, you know, these generalizations. Um, and, you know, maybe you get this job that apparently is really well paid in average, but you don't like it and you're kind of medium, medium at it, you know, and you're just not as good at it because you don't dedicate as much. And then you're just never gonna, you know, uh, grow in it, or maybe you're just gonna get fired because, you know, you're not really good at it, or you're just gonna be really frustrated about it. So I'll definitely go with taking risks and be courageous to pursue your passions. And, you know, maybe in the beginning until, you know, until you get to the top in the beginning is going to be hard. You're probably not, not going to be, you know, as, as well paid as you wanted. But, you know, if with persistence and, you know, with your passions, I think, you know, you have really good chances to, you know, strive to be the best. And usually when that happens, you know, everyone is, is rewarded accordingly. I love that reframing of, I think that's fantastic. I really appreciate and that. I think that, you know, I always like to see, um, you know, I think we always have to try to see, you know, the positive sides of things, you know, and I think that's something I take for everything. So we have this, this saying in Brazil, like you see the cup half full instead of half empty, you know, I think you have the same in English as well, right? Um, so yeah, I think that's an advice I would, I, that's something I would advise you all to, to always share, to take this, to have this approach in life, you know, so you can see, well, you know, this is my passion, but it's not well paid. Well, but it's your passion. So, you know, and you're so lucky to have found your passion and, and if, you know, if you have the ability, you know, you have the health and, you know, you have the opportunity to do so, I mean, you should definitely do it. Definitely agree 100%. Okay, time for one more question for Juan Pablo. So our other upvoted question here, I think this is interesting. You did mention kind of, you know, virtual competition, maybe networking, even, even in that situation. So given like the limitations that all of us have been facing in different degrees over the past year and a half of the pandemic, what are some tips that you have for students? Like, is it, does that make it harder for students to discover their passion? Because, you know, they're separated, they're outside of these spaces. What are some tips that you have for discovering your passions and, you know, engaging even in this scenario that we're still living through. You're muted. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think it makes it um, harder, it just makes it differently on how to engage in all these different topics or um, environments, right? Um, it, it, I mean, a lot is, is, is changing nowadays in education, in businesses, in, in every single uh, industry in the world, right? So uh, this doesn't make it harder. Just try to engage on the uh, virtual events. Try to uh, engage with the people that you have next to you. Not, I mean, we're in a pandemic, but you know, always try to um, experiment further than you have until now. Uh, try to learn more of what you haven't learned in the past, so that you might learn something new. You might, um, you know, find that you like something you didn't like before, and that might start a passion or a business or something new. So. Um, being remote doesn't mean to be 
to make it harder. It just makes it differently. And we need to find a way of engaging um, on a really good level and trying to experiment and find new ways uh, on finding our skills. That's great. And that's what's led to so much of the innovation that we've seen happening, you know, in companies and individuals over this time. Exactly. You guys, wow. That's all the time that we have for questions from our judges today. This was so incredible. Thank you guys for your engagement, for asking questions. Judges, thank you so much for your candor, for your vulnerability and your responses. This was super inspiring. Um, and I know that our students are coming out of this event motivated for the competition, but also really motivated to kind of put some of your career advice into practice, okay? I just have a couple more notes for our students here before we conclude. Um, the recording of this event is gonna be sent to you all uh, to all webinar registrants on Friday and all TGCC competitors in our weekly monthly email. I'm just gonna ask us to pop up the slides once more um, so that we can go over a couple of final details with you all. Um, before we conclude, uh, make sure that all of you are following TGCC on Instagram for all of the up-to-date um, announcements. So that's at Global Case Comp. Maybe we can pop that into the chat as well for anybody who needs it. Going, oh, we're, we're here on the slide now. This Friday evening, I mentioned, you know, our global webinars for you all to build skills. TGCC is hosting another global webinar for those of you who are curious about consulting or becoming investors. So we've talked a little bit about investment today. So you can join us for another expert panel where we'll be exploring these interesting careers, personal insights from our panelists, and you can register for that event and any other upcoming events on the TGCC events page, which you can find on the official website. I'll ask um, our, our help us to pop that into the chat as well, just in case you don't have that link easily. Okay, our next and final slide, I'll just go through this quickly because I know from the poll, we saw that 100% of people who voted were already registered for the competition. But just in case somebody has joined us who isn't registered yet, there is still time. Don't forget to register. You all have until next week, August 3rd, okay? Put together your team of two to four students, scan the QR code here. It'll take you directly to our registration page. Make sure you know, that you guys are able to lock in that registration so that you can get together with everyone, crack the business case, come up with an awesome solution for a real business challenge, uh, you know, really put into practice that creative problem solving that we've been talking about um, and exploring cutting edge technology through the future of mobility. So there's a little hint at, for you all about what the content of our case is gonna be. Um, okay, and you all are gonna be competing for amazing global prizes. You can see all those on the, on the website, but that includes mentorship sessions with global leaders, internship, cash prizes, and even more. So definitely don't miss out. We were super excited with the performance of our students in the, from the Central and South America region last year. Some students did, uh, a team did go on to win global prizes. So let's see what you guys are able to do this year. We're super excited to maybe we'll have a champion from our region. Okay, and just our next and final slide, just to close, once again, I would like to thank our sponsors and partners that are making TGCC 2021 possible. That's our principal partner, Tiger Global Management, our global partner, m and Invest, our official sponsor, PwC, and of course, powered by our team here at Crimson. We're so excited to be able to put on this fantastic event for you guys. Once again, thank you to our judges, our participants. We will see you at TGCC 2021, and everyone have a wonderful evening. Take care. Thank you.